Okay, so uh, morning guys. So we just do the zoom today. And now here's the, some of the questions that you have for calculus. So let's go over this. And this one is for uh, calculus, the textbook 3.6. Okay, so section 3.6. And this one is for number 27. Okay, number 27. And it's about finding the derivative. Okay, so we do have f of x. So that equals x over 1 minus natural log of x minus 1. Okay, let me fix this. Okay, so this one you want to differentiate f and find the domain of f. So first thing that you want to do, you want to use the quotient rule. So according to the quotient rule, we do know that it's uh, f prime times g minus g prime f and then over g squared. So what we got here is the derivative of x, which is 1, and then times the g of x, which is 1 minus natural log of x minus 1, and then minus derivative of this, which is 0, minus natural log of x minus 1, so derivative of natural log of x minus 1, then that would be considered negative 1 over the quantity of x minus 1. And don't forget about that, you multiply by uh, f of x, so multiply by x right here. Okay, so this one it's all over. Okay, so it's all over g squared, so which is 1 minus natural log of x minus 1, and then this whole quantity squared. So the rest of this, you can just find the, uh, try to find a way to simplify it. You can distribute. So once you distribute, <clears throat> so you end up with uh, 1 minus natural log of x minus 1, negative times negative, which is positive, so plus x over x minus 1 and then it's all over so the quantity of 1 minus natural log of x minus 1 bracket square so in order to find a domain for this so you got to watch out like certain thing here so we do have certain kind of restrictions so this one contains with uh, it's a rational functions so for the overall and also this part right here it's natural log so natural log that means the domain must be greater than 0 and this one's a rational function, so that means x cannot be 1, because that would be the restriction. And also, the denominator, so this whole thing right here, cannot be 0. So there's certain kind of restriction, we need to watch out for that. So let's just start with the denominator. So 1 minus natural log of quantity of x minus 1. So this one cannot be 0, so let's find out the restriction. So that means 1 equals natural log of x minus 1. And then you take the base e both sides. So once you take base e both sides, you got e equals x minus 1. So that means x. So that equals e plus 1. So again, this one is just part of the restriction. So it's part of the restriction. So now, how do you find out the other part of the restriction here? So the other way to find out the other part of the restriction is that this part right here, natural log, we do know that the graph. So this one is always considered going this way. The domain must be greater than 0. So that means x minus 1 must be greater than 0. So that means x must be greater than 1. Okay, so this one is part of the restriction, and this one is the part of the domain. Another thing that I need to watch out is that x minus 1. So x minus 1. If you set it equal to 0, because that's the other restriction. So that means x equals 1. So basically, this one is actually, you know, including that right here. So x got to be greater than 1. So that means for the domain, we do have... So it started at 1, but 1 is not included. So that means 1.00 something, all the way to e plus 1, because that's greater than 1. Again, also that's not included. And then union... So e plus 1, and then parentheses, infinity. So then that would be the domain for this.
derivative. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have. So the next one we do have uh, 3.8. Okay, so let me take a look at that right here. So 3.8 and this one is number 19 as asked by one of the calculus students earlier today. So according to the problem, the quantity of the charge Q in columns C that has passed through a point in the wire up to the time T measure in second. So this one is quite similar to part of the lecture, one of the lesson that we did on the YouTube channel. So it's given by the charge. Okay, so I'm going to set up the new slide for this. So this one definitely it's not good. So edit. Okay, maybe I can do this. Okay, clear, clear all annotation. There you go. Okay, so, and for this one, so we do have Q of T. So about the handwriting. So this one, I try to do the best I can. And then this one, it's uh, T to the power of three minus two T square. And then plus six T. And then plus two. So this one is the charge for a column. And first thing that you want to find out is find the current when t equals 0.5 second. And then b, t equals one second. So this one's telling you that to check example three. The unit of the current, it's in amp. Okay, so one amp equals one column per second. So at what time is the current the lowest? Okay, so first thing that you want to find out, so you want to find out the current. So C of T, which is the derivative of the column, the Coulomb. So which is uh, 3T squared minus 4T and then plus 6. So you want to find out the current at, well, for part A, you want to find out the current at T equals 0.5 second. So basically just plug in a number and then try to evaluate it. So C of 0.5. So we got 3 times 0.5 quantity square minus 4 times 0.5 and then plus 6. So basically just evaluate what this is. It's about PEMDAS. Okay, parentheses, exponent, you know, all that. So you guys should be pretty familiar with this. And then for part B and then T, it's at 1 second. So T at 1 second. So basically just plug in the time. So C of 1. So you want to find out exactly what that is. So 3 of 1 square minus 4 times 1 plus 6. Again, this one, the evaluation, basically you need to figure out what that is. And then for the last part of this, at what time is the current the lowest? So for part C here, so in order to find out the current the lowest, so that means the rate of change of the current will be considered 0. So the rate of the change of current is zero. So we got zero equals three t squared minus four t plus six. Okay, so basically this one, well, we need to take the derivative of the c of t first. So what I did here, I need to fix that. So this one, I just said that equal to zero, which is incorrect. Okay, so basically this one, take the derivative of that c of t Okay, so let's take the derivative of C of T. So we do have 6T minus 4. And then you said that equal to 0. So that means T equals 4 over 6. And then reduce. So that means the time is 2 third second. So at time equals 2 thirds second. So we guarantee that the current is going to be the lowest. Okay. So that's the one. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have for the rest of this. Okay, so we got 3.6, 3.8, the book were already answered. And now we do have questions from the study packet. Okay, so let me take a look at that, the uh, study packet. The one for 3.4, 3.7, someone asked me about 36 and 37. Okay, so let me take a look at this. <clears throat> uh, let's go over that 3.3, 3.6 study packet first. So this one is for number 12. So this one is asking about what is the derivative of 4x to the power of 3 sine of x, okay? So again, let me just clear out all this. Okay, 
Okay, so, and the question once again, so this one is for the study packet 3.4 to 3.6 and number 12 <clears throat> so number 12 once again is asking about the uh, second derivative so 4x to the power of 3 sine of x so let's say that we do have a function like this so that means y prime we're going to use the product rule and also the uh, well there's no need to use the chain rule just the product rule so 4x to the power of 3 derivative of that would be considered 12 x square and then times chain rule so sine of x and then derivative of sine of x which is cosine of x and then times 4x to the power of 3 so this one it just give you the first derivative now what about the uh, second derivative so second derivative will be considered y double prime so 12x square so again this one we have to use the product rule so it's 24x times sine of x and then plus cosine of x because that's the derivative of sine of x times 12x squared so that takes care of the first term second derivative and now what about the uh, second derivative of this part right here so again derivative from cosine of x so we do have negative sine x and then times 4x to the power of 3 and then plus cosine of x and then times the derivative of 4x to the power of 3, which is 12x to the power of 2. So from here, anything that you find out similar, so it can combine them. So 24x sine x. So I just want to group that with the sine x here. So sine x times 4x to the power of 3. And then as you may notice, cosine x, 12x squared, cosine x, 12x squared. So this one is considered the exact same term. So if that's the exact same term, we can basically just combine them. So that turns out to be 2 cosine of x times 12x squared. So it's 24x squared and then cosine of x. And then the rest of this, I mean, it's up to you whether you want to take out the greatest common factor or you want to regroup them. So, But I do recommend you to just leave it like this. Okay, so that's number 12 on the study packet of 3.4 to 3.6. And now let's take a look at that number 28, the continuation with that the same study packet. So number 28, let's see what I got right here. I need to refer back to the packet because I don't have the actual, the hard copy of the packet. I'm just referring back to the PDF file. So I found number 26, okay, number 28, getting there. Okay, so here's 28. So find the equation of a tangent line to 2x square, uh, 2xy square. Okay, let me just write it down. Again, need to clear up all this. Okay, let me just use the new slides easier. Okay, so for uh, number 28. Okay, let's change the thickness for the pen. Okay, so 28, so this one, find the equation of a tangent line to 2xy squared plus y, 4y to the power of 3. Okay, so equation of a tangent line to the equation of 2xy squared plus 4y cubed. So that equals negative 24. So it's going through the point 1 comma negative 2. Again, the equation of a tangent line. So first thing that you want to do, we do know that's an implicit equation. So that means we need to take the derivative implicitly. So anytime they see like x, y, so they're both like appearing on the same side. So that means it's implicit dif differentiation. So let's use the uh, implicit derivative. So product rule and the power rule. So we do have derivative of 2x, which is 2 times y squared. And then plus derivative of y squared, which is 2y, then y prime and then times 2x. And then derivative of 4y to the power of 3, we do have 12y squared times y prime. Okay, so just want to check that. And then derivative of negative 24, which is 0. Okay, so we just use the power rule, the product rule, and also implicit derivative. 
Again, y is the dependent variable, so that means anytime they take the derivative of that, it comes along with y prime, so this one is just, it's a little error. So 12y square times y prime, not y square. Okay, so let's just fix that. So that one's supposed to be y prime. So now, the thing you want to do for the next step, you want to isolate y prime by itself. So for this two term right here, so since they both have y prime, so basically we can combine them together, or we want to factor out y prime. And then anything that's not related with that y prime, so we can just move that to the right hand side. So for that 2y squared, you can move that to the right hand side. So what I'm going to be doing, so subtract 2y squared both sides. So subtract 2y squared both sides. And then at the same time, for this 2y, y prime, 2x, we can just multiply it. So it's 4xy, y prime. And then 12y squared, y prime. So basically just leave it. So here's the new equation we got. And then before you, again, I just keep writing that y squared here. It's supposed to be y prime. Sorry about that. Okay, so for the next step, you want to take out y prime. So take out y prime. So now we do have 4xy and then plus 12y squared. So that equals negative 2y squared. And then finally, y prime. So we want to divide both sides by 4xy, 12y squared, divided by 4xy, plus 12y squared. So now once you find the derivative, so this one got canceled, this one got canceled, all got canceled here. So we just want to plug in a number. So x is 1, and then y is negative 2. So basically, plug in a number, so negative 2 quantity squared, that's 4, 4 times negative 2, then that will be negative 8. And then the denominator, so basically plug in 1 here, negative 2, so 1 times negative 2, negative 2 times 4, which is negative 8. And then negative 2 squared, 4, 4 times 12, 48, so plus 48. And now you want to simplify that from here. So negative 8 over the quantity of negative 8 plus 48. So you do have negative 8 over positive 40. And now you want to reduce. So it's negative 1 over 5. And guess what this is? That's right. This one is a slope. So for the final step, so for the final step, you want to write the equation of a tangent line. So which is what? Y minus Y1. So that equals M times X minus x1. So this one is just the open parentheses right here. So basically just plug in a number and then just convert that to the slope intercept form. So y minus y1, so which is negative 2. And then the slope that we found, negative 1 fifth. And then x minus x1, so x minus 1. And then the rest of this. So just convert that to the slope intercept form, please. Okay, so finish that. So that's number 28 for sections 3.3 .3 to 3.6 study packet. And now take a look at that, the number 31. Okay, so let me move down to uh, number 31 here. So number 31, let's see what we got. <clears throat> so this one, just find a derivative of log base 5. Again, need to set up the new slide here real quick. Okay, so for number 31... So what is the derivative of log base 5 of negative 3x plus 3? So first thing that you want to do, I mean you can use like a u substitutions according to the solutions that showing that it's uh, u equals negative 3x in their functions. And then u prime which is considered negative 3. So substitute that in so we do have log base 5 of u. And then from here, we take the derivative. So derivative y prime, well, again, this one is y. So y prime, then that will be considered 1 over u. And then times uh, natural log of 5. But don't forget, times u prime. And then you want to unsubstitute. So we do have negative 3 over natural log of 5. 
again, because this one is part of the coefficient, so that's why I just want to put them together. And then times 1 over u, which is 1 over negative 3x plus 3. And for those you might be wondering, can I simplify this? Negative 3, can I cross that out? Yes, you may. So negative 3 net, uh, natural log of 5 times, so this one we can take out that negative 1 or negative 3. So we do have x minus 3. So the negative 3, negative 3 got cross cancel. So eventually we left with 1 over natural log of 5 times the quantity of x minus 3. Okay, so now let's see what else that we have. So the next one, 42. Okay, number 42. Okay, let's see right here. Okay, 42. Okay, that's something you guys like always, you know, struggle with that. <clears throat> so that's the inverse trig function. So for number 42, so given that V of X, it's given as arc secant of 4x minus 4. And you may notice that r secant is just considered inverse of secant of 4x minus 4. Okay, so we want to find the uh, first derivative. So dv over dx. So dv over dx. So according to the formula for that inverse of secant, so this one is considered... Well, for the formula for inverse of secant, it's 1 over x times square root of x squared minus 1, okay, according to the formula for secant. So, well, instead of using that 4x minus 4, again, you want to set up u equals 4x minus 4. So that means u prime, and that will be 4. Okay, so before you take the derivative, so let's just substitute that secant inverse, okay? So let me just erase this. <clears throat> okay, so let's just do the u substitution first. Well, because that, it makes a whole lot easier by the time you differentiate it. So we do have v of x, so that equals inverse of secant of u. So now take the derivative v prime of x, or according to the solution, it's showing that's dv over dx, which is the same thing. So it's 1 over, so u times square root of u squared minus 1 times u prime. Again, for the final step, you want to substitute or unplug. So u, once again, is the quantity of 4x minus 4. And then times the square root of 4x, quantity of 4x minus 4 squared minus 1. And I need to extend this fractional bar times u prime times 4. And for those who might be wondering, can I cross out the 4? Can I factor out 4 here? Yes, you may. So cross that out. So the 4 and the 4, because this one you want to take out the greatest common factor. So eventually what's left here, it's 1 over the quantity of x minus 1 times square root of 4x minus 4 quantity square minus 1. Okay. So this one is for number 42. And now let's take a look at that, the uh, study packet, 3.4 to 3.7. Okay, so people do have questions regarding 36, 37. So we'll take a look at those two problems in just a second. So again, let me just set up the new slide here. Okay, so the other packet we have. <coughs> So 3.4, 3.7 study packet, and this one is 36, 37. Okay, so for 36, this one you want to differentiate each function with respect to x. Okay, so 36. So this one is for the packet of 3.4 to 3.7, number 36. So it's showing that y equals log base 4 of the quantity of 3x to the power of 3 over negative 4x squared plus 3, and then to the power of 4. Now, first thing that you probably want to do is by using the property of logarithm. 
So this one you can use the power to coefficient. So we do have four log base four of three x to the power of three over negative four x squared plus three. So it started off with the power to coefficient property. And then since you know this, this one is a structure of quotient, so we can expand it. So we do have four times the quantity of log base four of three x to the power of three. And then minus log base four of the quantity of negative four x squared plus three. Parentheses. And then you're probably thinking about that it's a product, it is. So that means we can expand it a little bit more. So this one is written as four log base four of three. And this one is not just the product, but it's also the power to the coefficient. So three times log base four of x. Okay, so the power, you bring it to the front. Again, it's the product to sum and then power to coefficient. And then what about this term right here? So just carry that over. So log base 4 of negative 4x squared plus 3. So that one, basically, we just leave it. Nothing you can do about it. And now, before you differentiate it, you're probably wondering, can I distribute that 4? Yes, you may. Because we want to take the derivative with respect to the term. So we want to do it term by term instead of doing that with a product or like a bunch of mess right here with the, the quotient and also the power. Okay, so now let's just expand it. So distribute. So we got 4 log base 4, 3. That's a constant. And then plus 3 log base 4, well, 12 log base 4, excuse me. Because you want to distribute that 4 into the coefficient. Okay, so let me just change that one here. So this one's supposed to be 12 log base 4, x. And then minus 4 log base 4 of the quantity of negative 4x squared plus 3. Okay, so now let's find out what y prime is. So y prime, so this one is a constant, so derivative of constant, obviously it's a 0. And then 12 log base 4 of x. So by using the formula of derivative regarding logarithm, so if you see anything like derivative of log base b, x, it's always considered 1 over x and then times natural log of b. Okay, so this one would be considered 12 over x, and then times natural log of 4. And then what about for this part right here? Again, the coefficient, we just want to put that on the top. So 4 over the quantity, 1 over this whole quantity. So let's put in parentheses, negative 4x squared plus 3 and then times natural log of 4. But don't forget, this one is considered part of the function. It's an inner function. So we need to take the derivative of that. So then that would be negative ax using the power rule and then a constant rule. So it's just multiplied by negative ax because derivative of 3 is 0. So basically this one is the final derivative. And of course you can just simplify it, you know, make it a little bit simpler. So negative times negative, which is positive. So you can multiply this straight across. And the zero, there's no need to show the zero. Okay, so you can simplify the rest of this. And now let's see what else that we have for the other problem. It's also from the same packet, but this one it's a number number 37. Okay, so for each problem, find instantaneous rate of change of the function at the given value. And you may use the provided graph to sketch the functions. Okay, so let's take a look at that one. Okay, so what I need to do here, change the slide. So 37, so we do have y equals 1 over x minus 3. And then the given value, it's a negative 1. So at the position of x equals negative 1. So again, find instantaneous rate of change first. So, well, basically just take that derivative using the quotient rule. So we do have derivative of 1, 0, times x minus 3. That's just nothing. And then minus derivative of x minus 3, which is 1, and then times 1. So that's just negative 1. So it's all over quantity of x minus 3 squared. 
So basically the derivative of this is negative 1 times the quantity of x minus 3 squared. And then guess what you need to do with that x equals negative 1? Basically plug in a number. So we got negative 1 over negative 1 minus 3 quantity squared. So we do have negative 1 over negative 4 quantity squared. So we do have negative 1 over 16. Okay, so that would be the instantaneous rate of change. So in order to uh, find a graph, you can just sketch the graph for this function. So this one is a rational function. So let's see what I have for the template here. So hopefully I do have the grid. Doesn't look light. I do have the grid right here. Okay, let's see what I can do. Yeah. So there's no grid that I can make the graph right now, but let's see what I can put in here. So this one basically x minus three, so three is just the vertical asymptotes. Okay, so x is the vertical asymptote. So here's what I can do. If there's no grid, I can use that the line segment. Okay. So here's the x-axis, the y-axis. Oops, it's a little bit tilted. Okay, one more time. So first thing that you want to find out is the uh, VA for this one. So vertical asymptote, obviously it's uh, 3. Because that if you set the denominator equal to 0. So VA x equals 3. So for that VA, so that means there's a dotted line going through F3. And also the graph is going to be like a hyperbole, hyper, hyperbolic curve. So it looks like it's going to be like this. And the other part of the graph is going to be like this. Oops. It's a little bit over. Okay, so we'll fix that. So it's getting closer to the asymptote here. So what happened at 1? Okay, so at negative 1, excuse me. Negative 1, so that means here's the instantaneous rate of change. So at this position, it's negative 1. Okay, so somewhere over here, so that shows the instantaneous rate of change. Well, this part of the graph is not increasing, it's actually declining. So as you can see that, it's declining. So that's why it's considered negative. So it's negative 1 over 16. It's a very small number. It's a very small decimal, irrational. And it's getting close to uh, 0 because it's almost flat. Okay, so I wish you guys enjoy watching this video. So hopefully I clarify everything that you have. So for all the questions that someone asked me about that on Zoom, okay? So I'll see you next time. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also watch the other video that I put up here later on today. Ciao.